His ideas were difficult to understand. His name was Filippo Brunelleschi. I think that the G word of genius is something that people are reluctant to use these days, but I think is very applicable in the case of Brunelleschi. However, maybe like many geniuses, he wasn't someone you would necessarily want to know. Brunelleschi's style was unorthodox, and it gained him few friends. He was in many arguments with the so-called city fathers. On one occasion, he was actually carried out of the main government palace forcibly because he'd lost his temper and apparently he'd insulted people and they were not going to be insulted and they threw him out. But the family who had sponsored a pirate for a pope were not daunted by the temper of a maverick architect. In the Medici, Brunelleschi had found patrons willing to gamble on his judgment. Brunelleschi's vision would resurrect forgotten concepts of the past. And in 1419, a new orphanage in Florence became a showcase for his ideas and for Medici ambition. Brunelleschi was using the classical orders of architecture, something that hadn't been used in over a thousand years. And the people of Florence were so amazed by this um, that it's said that they gathered on the building site, much to the inconvenience of the workmen, and actually watched this happening because they simply hadn't seen anyone build in that style before. This was the first time true columns had been used for structural support since the days of ancient Rome. Out of Brunelleschi's turbulent mind had come a vision of classical simplicity. Brunelleschi set to work. Cosimo would publicly support him. The church authorities were desperate, offering a massive cash prize for a solution. Brunelleschi's model showed the largest unsupported dome in Christendom. But he was fearful his ideas would be stolen. He wrote his calculations in code and refused to explain the details of his plan. No one in Florence was taking more risks than Brunelleschi. His magnificent dome was rising even higher. But with each new brick, the angle of the dome increased. This was the critical phase of Brunelleschi's design. One of the major problems Brunelleschi faced when he was building the dome, and particularly when he got to the upper reaches of it, um, was how he could prevent the bricks from falling inwards. What Brunelleschi did was to insert bands of vertical brickwork to tie the horizontal courses to these vertical ones, which were keyed to courses five, six, rose beneath that where the mortar had dried. Brunelleschi's herringbone design was untried and untested. The slightest miscalculation could result in catastrophic failure. This great achievement had mirrored the rise of the city's most powerful family. And now, it towered majestically over the city of Florence, the greatest architectural feat in the Western world. 
Cosimo basked in the dome's reflected glory, inviting the Pope himself to conduct the consecration. If Cosimo could have looked into the future, he would have seen the story of the Renaissance unfold on the ceiling of the dome itself. Weighing 37,000 tons and using more than 4 million bricks, Brunelleschi's dome was proof that man could conquer the seemingly impossible. A friend of Cosimo's wrote of its impact. It touches the skies and casts its shadow over the whole of Tuscany.